Hi, Stephanie Kwame from the CAD Academy, and today we're going to talk about a very important part of a construction drawing set, and that would be the site plan. I've been working with a uh, wonderful uh, architect, and he basically is so extremely creative. It comes up with ingenious ideas is the way I figure it. <laughs> but to save a customer a lot of money and also to make a very creative uh, view this is preliminary data from him uh, they he's going to grade out part of this lot and then cantilever part of the building over a sloping lot line and he needed to show that so we uh, decided how, what would be the easiest way to do that we went to the uh, website that uh, it's located in this is Maricopa County and you can actually take data from the website that's not the lot I just uh, I'm using that as an example and you can save it in all kinds of different formats so you could actually bring in uh, raster data you can also change it into vector data we found out but the best way uh, to bring in that data we found out was to go to the surveyor who is going to <coughs> be doing the Alta survey for the the set of plans and he had uh, data that was put in DWG format. So we edited out all the things that we didn't need and just put in a few contours to uh, see what that would do. And that's the way we decided was the best way to work with it. So let's play with that a little bit. It never ceases to amaze me what this program can do. <clears throat> if we go to File Special and set up I set it up for one foot and the scale of 1 to 12. And setting up the scale is very important. And then <clears throat> now we can just go ahead and bring in the edited drawing, the DWG. I'm going to go ahead and merge it. And we'll just specify on the screen where to put it. But I don't know where the beginning point is, so it's not necessarily going to be right there. These are layers that came in from the DWG. Now let's zoom out, and there it is. There's the lot. So we need to bring that down to the drawing, or the drawing up to that, I guess. And let's zoom it down closer, and then we'll accurately position it. <clears throat> the architect put in some construction lines for us to um, snap to. So we'll snap to that. And you can see that the building is within the setback area, so that must be the correct area. So now the at issue is making this into a mesh so that we can show the contours. If we look right now, we have nothing. So let's go ahead and select the mesh tool. And on the mesh tool, you want to make a, a block big enough to be as deep as the, the longest valley, I guess you might call it. Similar to if you were uh, cutting something with wood, you would start with the big block and cut away at it. So I have 50 feet in here. And also I made it all um, just dirt because it's uh, very rural there. Okay, you can see up on the screen I have text selected so it won't let me do a mesh so now it will let me do a mesh so you have uh, you have if you that or happens to you you know you've got something selected it thinks whatever you have selected is what you want to work with so there we have a now we have a mesh and this is what that looks like let's go back here and now we want to make the contours part of the mesh so that we can show the topography so we're going to go ahead and select this for editing, making sure that mesh is highlighted over here. Holding down the space bar, we basically add in this or connect these to the mesh so that we can control um, the curvature, the valleys, the elevation. It just amazes me the depth of things that you can do with this package and uh, just like another one that I used to use for years and years that uh, it's never ending the learning curve is never ending and it's always a wonderful surprise to find something new that you uh, can do with it and this is one of those 
Okay, so now we have our um, the um, contours, and you can see that they are in with the mesh now because you can see them on the mesh. So now we've got those as part of the mesh. So if I do an arrow and select the mesh, it selects the contours as well. So now let's see what damage we can do. Let's go ahead and select one, this one and we're going to change its Z to be minus 2, which will be minus 2 feet. And we'll do the same here. That's minus 2. Although they could be different, like this one could be minus 3. And whatever they basically are is what you would put in. And that side is minus 4. And of course the more um, contours and the contour and the more dots on there the more accurate you can be with your contour data I'm not going to put too much more in because uh, you can but if you got the idea from this that you can uh, put in a mesh and make it into a um, into p editable uh, points, then that's basically it. Okay, so we have a few here to see what that looks like. And now you can see I may have made an error on this ridge here, or else I didn't put in uh, the contour information on that ridge. I missed one. But you can begin to see how that could be, I mean that that is cantilevered over the side of the building there just a little bit. And so basically that is how you enter in uh, contour data for doing uh, site plans and um, we are going we will have we do have a quick start on the site on the instructor portal as well that goes with step one, step two, step three that will help walk you through doing a site plan. Let's run, I will leave you with a photo render projection of a partially contoured area. There's a mathematical computation that it does for contours and, uh, and you can make that, you know, like splines and stuff like that. Thank you for listening.